Hello and welcome to my channel. In this channel, we explain various nursing concepts in a simple form for better and easy understanding. These videos could be used by both LPN and RN students as well as nurses who are trying to refresh their basic concepts. My name is Nas Mosh. So in this video, we're going to start talking about various disorders or oncology disorders. And more specifically in this video, we're going to talk about oncology disorders or cancers that directly affect the respiratory system. In that, we're going to talk about lung and thyroid cancer. Okay, so let's start with lung cancer. So what is lung cancer? Lung cancer is actually only screened on patients who are at high risk of getting this lung cancer. A low dose of CT scan can be performed. So if you're not at a risk factor, you know, you don't have the risk factors for getting lung cancer. It's not done routinely. And what are the risk factors that could make you get this lung cancer? Include like smoking, okay? Exposure to certain chemicals, males, secondhand smoking, as well as pollution. Some signs and symptoms of this. Remember this. This is a famous question. What are the signs and symptoms of lung cancer? A cough, persistent cough that does not go away. Bland tinged sputum. Weight loss, unexplained weight loss. Fatigue, a dull chest on percussion. SOB, shortness of breath, as well as chest pain. Some diagnosis that we do, of course, we'll do a CT scan and we can do a bronchoscopy with a biopsy. With that's when we'll, you know, do the bronchoscopy, do the biopsy with a needle to collect a tissue sample just to get you know, differentiate what kind of cancer, the stages and, you know, staging of the cancer. And how do we treat this? You know, a patient with lung cancer, this is our respiratory, this is our airway. A, B, C is always remember, airway, breathing, airway comes first. So with this patient, we're going to give them bronchodilators because their respiratory will be compromised as well as corticosteroids for the inflammation. We'll do some chemical uh, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, radiation, photodynamic therapy, lobotomy, as well as a uh, phenonectomy. So it's either they will take a, a, part, a lobe or a certain part of the lung that is actually affected. One of the common complications with lung cancer is actually superior vena cava syndrome. And actually, you need to know that when somebody has or exhibits superior vena cava syndrome, this is a medical emergency that results from pressure placed on the vena cava by the tumor. So when you have pressure pressed on your vena cava, your cardiac, go back to cardiac, learn about, you know, your heart. So we need to release this pressure. And how do we do this? By treating the issue, which will be the tumor. So we'll place a stent to open up the vena cover, as well as radiation of that tumor that is causing this pressure. So let's talk about thyroid cancer. So thyroid cancers do interfere with the function of the surrounding structures. So remember the thyroid where they are placed, right? It affects your respiratory, okay? And what are the structures around the thyroids? The thyroid glands. You have your larynx, your pharynx, your esophagus as well because they increase in size and spread. So when they increase in size and they spread, they compress your respiratory tract, right? So types of thyroid cancer, there are various types. We have um, plastic carcinoma. This invades the areas surrounding the tumor. It replicates quickly and usually metastasize before diagnosis. Papillary carcinoma, it's slow growing and is the most common. Uh, medullary carcinoma, it mostly occurs due to endocrine disorders, which causes multiple tumors common in older adults. When you talk about older adults, the range for this medullary is 50 years and above. And follicular carcinoma, it actually affects the blood vessels, bones, and lung tissues. It attaches to the trachea, muscle, vasculature, as well as the skin. Some risk factors for thyroid cancer include females, okay? A lot of females have thyroid issues. And then low iodine diet, this could lead to the follicular carcinoma, radiation exposure, as well as older age. Diagnostics will do a serum thromboglobin, and with this, we'll note an elevation. We'll do our TSH, T3, and T4 levels. This check the thyroid function. They are usually 
normal with thyroid cancer. That's something you need to know. Calcitonin will be elevated. While we're talking about calcitonin, remember the parathyroid glands, they release calcium, right? So they're on top of the thyroid. So if there is an issue with it, you know, of course, the parathyroid glands will be affected. Oh, okay. So we can also have a biopsy, MRI, our imaging stuff, biopsy, ultrasound, MRI, and CT scan. Nothing clear for these patients. Remember, we always have to monitor a patent airway because this is like a direct involvement of the respiratory system, right? We assess swallowing, aspiration precautions, and we administer medications as prescribed because most of the time, most if they do a treatment where they remove the thyroid gland, this patient will have to be on thyroid replacing hormonal medication like thyroxine. So let's talk about treatment. So with treatment, they will do a thyroid suppression therapy by medication by administering administering levothyroxine. So what does that levothyroxine do? This replaces the T4 need in the body function after thyroid surgery. We can do radiation, okay? We can do radioactive dye therapy as well as surgery. We can do a thyroidectomy, which could be either total or partial, and a thyroidectomy as well. Some complications that we need to know about with thyroid cancer include mexiedema coma. I talked about mexiedema coma in our endocrine because it's what? It's an emergency. And what is this? This is due to a deadly low level of the thyroid hormone, which is hypothyroidism. Signs and symptoms include stupor, hypoglycemia, hyponatremia, respiratory depression, altered cardiac functions like hypotension as well as decreased cardiac output. And we could also have a thyroid storm. And what is a thyroid storm? This is actually also a life-threatening emergency caused with excess thyroid hormone releases. So with hypothyroidism, everything slows down. That's makes edema. But with a thyroid storm, you're like electrified. Everything is going up. So it's hypothyroidism. And this is after no surgery you watch this after somebody has had that thyroid surgery and signs and symptoms of this include seizures right we are electrified tremors anxiety confusion psychosis nausea and vomiting diarrhea fever tachycardia and systolic hypertension that's the it for this video we'll catch you in the next video Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. See you on the next one. Bye.